Good evening and welcome to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen Budget Workshop. It is April 4th, 2023 at 6 p.m. Call this workshop to order. Um, we're going to go into the budget, so it's discussion of the City of Laverne 2024-2025 fiscal year budget. And I will turn it over to Ms. Phyllis, who's going to walk us through the whole general fund. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight we're going to cover the general fund operating budget. Uh, we will not be going line by line. I'll be kind of hitting the highlights and uh, give you the most important pieces. And then we'll cover the nonprofits, and then we'll go into um, the capital and other new operating type expenses. So for the general fund on the revenue side, um, mainly we had two substantial increases and that was on the local sales tax side we increased that budget uh, by about two million dollars uh, just based on what we're seeing um, in the uh, year-to-date numbers and prior year numbers um, so we budgeted we went from 14 and a half million budget last year to 16 and a half million prior year we collected about 16.3 million in current Year to date, we're running at about 16.7, so we felt comfortable with um, increasing that to 16.5 million dollars. The other revenue source that we made some adjustments to was the state shared revenue. We increased that from 4 million dollars to 4.6 million, and again, that's based on trending. Um, we're collecting a little more sales tax with you know, the retail businesses that we've. Um, acquired so that's basically all it is on the revenue side as far as substantial increases on the expense side and we're not going to go into every single department because operating expense really doesn't change a lot from year to year other than your natural normal increases um, I do want to point out what did substantially increase this year and that is health insurance increased by about 18 percent and that was covered through all the departments um, we do we did include a wage increase of approximately three three plus percent and then our um, property liability and auto insurance went up substantially and um, they went up eight percent on property eight percent on the base uh, cost of property or base value of property plus a, there was a four percent inflation factor built into that there's also a 6% increase for the law enforcement liability and an 8% increase on auto damage. With that being said, if you'll turn to page 4, at the very bottom of the page is the uh, summary of revenues and expenses. So we expect to generate approximately $35 million in revenue in the general fund and our expenditures are going to be approximately 31901 So that leaves us with approximately three million, roughly $3,200,000 of surplus. Um, and, of course, that will be absorbed with capital and new operating expenses. Do, do you have, I know that we just got these out to you all this morning, but do you have any questions for me at this time on any any of the departmental expenses or any of the revenue side of anything? I've got one with revenue, and it's just in regards to um, some of the contracts we have, like for the towers. I know they have in where we can request yearly an increase in those. Um, have we done that for this upcoming fiscal year, and can that be incorporated in with the numbers? We have. It won't be huge impact, but yeah. still. We have not, um, and most of our Power um, increases would, are in the 413 fund, I believe. So we, we can certainly look at that if we have a. Yeah, the the tower at the water plant, uh, they did an automatic increase last year. We didn't have to ask for it. They did it on their own. Yeah. So I would expect them to do it again this year. Um, the tower that's at uh, Station 42, they're actually asking for their payment to go away for another three-year period like they did a few years ago so that has not come before you yet uh, our attorney has requested that we 
wait until that other issue with the cell tower at the water plant is completed to kind of use that uh, as leverage to make sure that gets resolved. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure we're doing that because I know for, for years and years and years it just it stayed at that same rate. We weren't increasing. They, they did show where it went up some over the years. So it wasn't a total static number for, for years and years, but they, they did show us that at one point. It was, I've got the emails somewhere last year for that when I inquired about it. And if you do, after you review this, and if you do have any questions, please feel free to email me or call me. <coughs> if you have, don't have any questions, um, we can move on to the nonprofits. That would be the last page of your packet. down through the nonprofit these are the requests that were sent in from the various eight nonprofit agencies of course we support the Rutherford County EMA director um, portion of his salary um, that comes out to about 13,568 for the Laverne portion Chamber of Commerce uh, their amounts have not changed in several years we have the economic development 11500 convention and tourism 7500 and destination rutherford at 20000 rta i have not seen any kind of increases for rta so we're budgeting again at 12872 gnrc has not requested any increases so we're, theirs is at 13046 rutherford county health department has requested 4000 <coughs> pauls has requested 30000 Meals on Wheels, uh, Mid Cumberland, has requested approximately 12, 13,000. Oh. MCHRA, it's right under Pauls, Rutherford County Pauls. Meals on Wheels at 7,500? Uh huh. Okay. Said, I okay. thought you said 12,000. I did. I combined them all. Oh, oh okay. The Child Advocacy, we uh, they requested. Um, Sixteen thousand dollars. Eight thousand of it comes from the general fund, and a couple lines down, uh, they also request eight thousand out of the drug fund. Uh, Club Knockout has requested twenty-five thousand, which is an increase over a prior year of fifty. <coughs> uh, Carpe Artist Artista has requested twelve thousand five hundred. Uh, Graceful Gems, uh, which we supported a couple of years ago, has requested twenty-five hundred. Uh, we talked about child advocacy. The Tennessee Public Safety Network has requested 4,500. The T Tennessee Association Chief of Police has requested 4,500. The Industrial Development Board has requested 10,000. We received that uh, request today. And then the Industrial Development Board um, for <coughs> purchasing of property. Um, there's been a request of $2.5 million there. Uh, we have some new requests at the bottom, Possibility Place. Um, and I have all of the information from all of the different nonprofits right here if you want to look at them after the meeting. Um, the possibility Place has requested 3000 Laverne Housing has requested 27290 Thriving Together has requested 2000 And the Rutherford County Regional, Rutherford County has requested $624,000 for a regional forensic center. That brings a total request for nonprofits at $3.3 million. Bruce, that, go ahead. Bruce, can you reach out to Paul Latour? Um, I know that um, for the economic development portion, they are changing some of the conferences they go to. Um, they're not going to the um, ICSC recon. And so um, I just want clarification as to what all that money kind of goes to. Um, with them not going to that conference, is, how is it going to, are they going to go to other conferences to offset or, or what are they going to do? Because this is a, an investment with them. Okay. Go ahead. Is that the chamber yes. or the IDB? That's the chamber for economic development. Tom may know that.
And can we ask about these other ones, or do we just need to get those things from you and read about them? She's got some of them. Um, the, um, the housing authority is directly tied to the, um, that's the nonprofit associated with the Laverne Housing Authority. Bruce may be able to speak to that. I don't know. Do you do their minutes? Mm -hmm. or? Okay. No. Um, so that's kind of new with them. I do know they have a breakdown in their packet for um, a budget for that for the entire amount. Um, the Rutherford County uh, Regional Forensic Center. I can speak some to because um, I was involved with. Um, I was contacted about that donation. Is that uh, is that that deal with the county where they, so they don't have to send stuff? down to Nashville, Davidson County to yes, do it's, like autopsies and stuff? Yes, it's the forensic center that they're wanting to <coughs> build in Smyrna. Uh, they have requested from Murfreesboro $2.2 million. They've requested from um, Smyrna just under a million dollars, and they've requested from us $624,000. Um, they did state recently at one of their meetings that they can fund it themselves without a property tax increase um, but this was recently sent over to us after uh, the county mayor tried to hold uh, a couple of meetings with the town managers and the mayors but uh, circumstances popped up that that didn't happen but um, he basically wanted to request that all the cities go in on this county facility um, it would not be a uh, wouldn't be like a business investment there's no return on it on the investment other than the building gets built. So we don't get money back or interest. Um, we don't get front of the line. Uh, I believe Chief said in the last 12 months, we've done about 29 total autopsies, which would have gone to Nashville for them to process. So we're not doing a ton, thankfully. Um, but it's basically a little bit over half a million dollars is what the county is requesting from us to help them build their facility. So $624,000 and we don't really, is that something we benefit from, Chief, at all? Uh, the, the convenience of having something down, you know, closer is definitely advantageous for us in terms of expediting things. But from a, a fiscal standpoint, I don't think there's any benefit to us regardless. It, it costs us the same amount of money to send it elsewhere if you're talking about in terms of cases we don't I've been speaking with the mayor earlier today he said we don't get priority you know it's uh, it would basically be the status quo it's just closer and more convenient you know for us but they, they fulfill all of our requests regardless Bruce have and, and I know you've been around here since the city formed <laughs> um, <laughs> <Not quite. laughs> okay a little bit longer sorry um, <laughs> In, looking at past budgets, has the city ever put money forward towards any other uh, county government building? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, we, we do have the agreement for the uh, EMA director, which is obviously a personnel type situation. But when it comes to, uh, you know, their, their businesses, uh, not their businesses, their facilities, no, I'm not aware of any that we've actually helped fund. I don't want to. I don't want to sound cynical, but that's just just a lot of money to ask from our taxpayers to. Uh, and and we certainly want to help the county. That's just a lot of money asking from our taxpayers and not getting back. A, Are there any consequences if we don't? The, the, the autopsies would still be processed. So, um, I did have conversations today with Mary Esther and with Shane McFarland, uh, mayors respectively of Smyrna and Murfreesboro. Um, Mary Esther said she did not see this being able to make it through um, her council, and um, Shane did not know as far as whether or not it could make it through, but um, he stated they would have to do sizable cuts be able to do the 2.2 million with What's, them how much is the county paying right now to, to 
do that? You know, how much are they spending? That I, I don't know. That I don't know. That would we'd need a county uh, commissioner or county the mayor. Letter, the letter that we received from the county said it was a fifteen million dollar project. So if you take the two point two plus the one plus hours, you're what at three point two, about four million dollars out of fifteen. So it's at least eleven million dollars that that the county would be looking to fund plus the property value itself. So and my next question is what is this possibility place? Possibility place is a is it dedicated to providing comprehensive education and support services for adults with IDD, <coughs> empowering them to lead fulfilling independent independent lives. Um, they find themselves with capacity constraints that limit their ability to accommodate all individuals seeking assistance. Um, the, it's, it's, they serve the adults with intellectual and development disabilities. I guess I'll just have to read on that because I don't know anything about it. Are they out of Murfreesboro or? Yes. I want to say both they and Thrive <clears throat> Together are both out of Murfreesboro. And then thriving together is thriving together is you sound like United Way. Let's see. Uh -huh. I said it sounds like United Way to a degree with the services that they provide when I read through it today. Yeah, they do therapy, case management, supervised visitation, certified peer services to families currently served by the juvenile juvenile court system and Department of Children's Services. And then last but not least, the Laverne Housing. Laverne Housing doesn't. Have we, I know what that one is, Phyllis. I was just going to ask okay. Bruce, was there ever a uh, answer given from our legal department on whether or not we can even do that? Well, they, if, if they were looking to form a 501c3. So if they have done that, then yes, we could give to them as a nonprofit organization. Uh, I believe we still could give to them as a housing authority without the nonprofit, but it just boils down to what this board wants to do. Now, I'm all about helping them. Uh, the only thing is, is the conversations that I had with that guy from Murfreesboro is so unclear think uh well uh, he spoke about how limited the scope is that most of the for rutherford county most of the housing authority items go through murfreesboro county-wide um and that they're not doing like vouchers anymore and so it's really about um and it's it's more so i'd say the housing authority is about providing senior housing i believe that's part of the mission statement isn't it bruce i believe it is yes and so um They've spoken about wanting to partner with developers to develop that. Um, I haven't heard of any, at least, having come and spoke to the city yet about um, developing any senior housing, but um, we can always have them come out because that last meeting is usually when we have um, people come out. I believe so. And so um, we can always have them come out along with um, some of these new groups like Possibility place and um, thriving together do you think that you could get that guy that's over that I think Tom knows him too or, or somebody here had him he's in it who is it with the housing authority he's the attorney for the housing authority in Murfreesboro well Evan is the attorney right Evan's the one that Evan, has the, Evan was the one who got him I'm sorry right but the the, the other guy I've talked to him, but his the, name. The director down there? Huh? The, the director at Murfreesboro? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know him, but I, I know Evan is the attorney for that board. So, I mean, I'm sure he could connect <coughs> us with him. If Evan can get us an answer maybe before the last budget meeting, and Bruce, if you could send that out to all of us so that we would know, and then we can go from there with discussions at the end of the month. 
Who all do you want to present? I'd say positively place um, Brenda Bryant with um, Laverne Housing, Thriving Together. Okay. I would say if anybody has any questions on the IDB, we've got the, uh, the chair here. Forensic Center. That would that'd probably have to, have to be the mayor, wouldn't it? That would be. Yeah. You can either. Well, you can have um, Mayor Carr come and speak, or you can always reach out to him with specific questions. But I can see if, if they don't have a meeting, when we, excuse me, when we have our last workshop, and see if he can attend. I believe he attends almost all of their. Um, the mayor attends all of their um, other committee meetings. So you do want so. the car here? Yeah, let, let, let's say reach out to him, see if, as long as it's, it doesn't conflict with any of the, ca the county meetings, see if we can get him here. And if not, we can always get some kind of prepared answer from him, or he can send Eric Kennessy. Tom, I know Steve already asked you some questions about the chamber stuff, but can you come up? I'm having trouble hearing. I, c I can't hear you from over there. Can you tell me exactly what that money is for and how the city benefits from it? Pretty much represent the city in a lot of different ways. We, we've done our own retail, as they've told us for years. They do not go out and, re and uh, recruit uh, retail commercial. But they've certainly been very key in finding things like Amazon, uh, the people that are part 24. They travel, uh, you know, all over the United States on half of Rutherford County. Um, after you had asked the question, um, of course, I'm on the board. Thank you, Bruce, for putting me on that board. But um, I, every uh, quarter I get a financial statement from them. So that may give you some answers. I'm happy to get that over to you. Okay. Um, but I do think, to, to um, the mayor's point, if we break it down specifically to Laverne rather than the county, I don't think it hurts to have them say, you know, look, this is what we use it for, um, down to, you know, down to the penny. Does that make sense what I'm, I'm saying to you? Because while I'm part of it, I'm not in the weeds with them. Sure. How does the city, like, directly benefit other than bringing businesses here? I mean, is there any promises, guarantees with that type of investment? There isn't, but I think if you, if you look back over just the last 10, 15 years, you certainly can see what they've done. Again, um, two Amazons. Um, they helped with the um, all the people at all the all the businesses at, at, at High Point, all the businesses at Park Twenty Four. They help with they help us with business expansion. Um, Cardinal Health would be an example from you know their their expansion and what they what they've done there. Um, I see moving the headquarters from Orange County to the city. They were they were key. They helped work with the state and TVA and some of the other uh, entities that can help um, foster or or provide grants or so on incentives to have moved to not just Laverne but Rockford County. So um, that's how we benefit. I mean obviously job creation I would say would be the the, the big one. Um, they have they have been part of, of, of now recently some of our new commercial that's come in. They certainly um, we we kind of bounce things off each other with they we will call them and say, hey can you give us bring a deck down of, of what you may have or they may ask us the same thing. I think Mary, one time we had one going. I had a meeting and I think you went up there and, were, and did a, a kind of a uh, uh, dual recruitment um, and that was for that was for High Point, right? 24. Yeah. So I, I do think it's beneficial what they do, um, but I think uh, even going back to the days when I sat up there, um, I think pretty much every year Paul would come up and explain what, what he did. I think they would do a better job, but as early as tomorrow I can get the financial, their financials over to, to each of you if y'all would like. And, and there is a breakdown in the packet um, from reading through it that shows each city's contribution and it's a high level of how they break it down. You see salaries, insurance, just kind of, just very similar to how we do with our general fund budget. But it doesn't go into um, what specific actions are being taken for Laverne, which is... It's more county. It's more yes, county. It's, 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 it's overall. So. Um, we want to know, especially with ICSC recon not being a part of it, um, I'm interested in knowing what they're doing to supplement that or not and, and go from there. 
I do know that talking to Patrick, again, they're going to take those monies and, and put it more towards a regional, which is the ICSC Southeast, which is held in, in October each year in Atlanta. Um, they, for years, have kind of picked our brain because we've been the one out in the forefront of doing the retail because, you know, let's face it, Lamar needs it. Um, we're, we're starving for it versus the Murfreesboro and Smyrna. So I had told him, and I've always felt that, that uh, Kyle, I know you go there, and, and the mayor, you've gone there. Um, that that regional show is is uh, probably our best show. I'm not saying we haven't done good at the other. So I, I think they've kind of, kind of shifted their efforts from the national um, down to to a regional kind of kind of view. I want to say one more thing, Dennis. You may remember this going back 10 years. Uh, I know I remember when we cut their funding. Um, I think you were in Alderman at the time, um, and I know that the Smyrna and, and that breakdown that I'll send you will show you what each city donates to them or what they ask and, and what is given. So. I have had a conversation with Paul twice in the last couple of years about maybe Laverne stepping it up. I, I know that's probably not what y'all want to hear, but uh, you know, look, we've grown, the county's grown, they've done exceptional work, um, and I will say we it always not been it not it not it had not always been that way. We kind of always felt like maybe they kind of favored some of the bigger you know Murfreesboro or Smyrna, um, and I think they've bent over backwards to make sure Laverne knew that they were representing. Um, us as well. So, would you feel the same way with that just in the last couple of years, or Bruce? What are your thoughts on that? I know my first year we went and, and had quite a few meetings with them and got everyone playing off the same page where it was everyone wasn't necessarily doing that. So, um, we took a lot of steps to be able to, to repair past relationships going back years and years. So, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, we've had, I know I've had a good relationship with Paul. I saw Paul today. Um, with Senator Haggerty. Um, we, we have a very good relationship. Paul, Patrick, they call if they need something, um, and they're bounced stuff off. I think we're supposed to see Patrick next week. Next Thursday. Um, so, um, and then, Tom, you go to the, even the, uh, what is it, monthly or quarterly? It's quarterly, both quarterly. of them are quarterly. Well, yeah. actually, the Lunches. board of directors is every two months, but then there's the quarterly uh, economic development fund. Yeah. Bruce, thoughts? No, I mean, they, they have promoted primarily job growth over the years uh, for Laverne. You know, not so much the retail side, but they have been doing more retail here lately. So, I mean, I do think it's getting better than what it used to be. Uh, but, yeah, we and, and what Tom was saying about cutting their funding, we did. I think we cut it in half, literally in half. Uh, and it's never gone up since that time. So, um, you know, they, they do quite a bit for us for the amount that we <clears throat> give to them. That makes sense because whenever I looked at their budget, the shortfall was exactly the, the exact amount that we give. So in Smyrna, which I know has a similar population, mm -hmm. is right around 25,000, which mm -hmm. would be around 23 mm -hmm. if, if, if it was doubled. So mm -hmm. that, that explains that. So in your opinion, Tom, if, uh, if they cut out the national and focus harder on the Regional, that'll help benefit Laverne, or is it hard to say? I mean, I think, yes, either one would benefit. I, I would like to see them do both. I hate the year that they left the, the national show because it is, there'll be 40,000 people there. It's the biggest one every year. They didn't see the value in it. Um, they went out there and spent a lot of money, but the, I, I will tell you that they would take all the municipalities out to dinner and, and, and so on. Um, I'm not saying they haven't had deals and worked some things out there, but they kind of felt it was better in the county's interest to focus regionally. And, you know, um, I'd say definitely there's going to be some benefit to it. And if I may say one more thing, I know we got a lot more to say, but job creation, I mean, we're pushing 30,000 jobs with just within the city. I mean, if you just took that population of the employees here, that puts you in the top 25 cities uh, equivalent to, to the population of that. So they have done some great things for us in that regard. Um, obviously, our focus and our priority now is to bring in sales tax so we have money to sustain the city moving forward, but uh, they certainly have played a key role in all of that. So. And when I came in as mayor, we had Project Bear um, that um, the following year was announced, and that was ICY. Um, and then we've had multiple meetings and announcements with um, High Point or High Tower. Um, High Point. High Point. Um, with GovX, Best Buy, and others all in there um, that are providing jobs and opportunity and some sales tax with those warehouse yeah. jobs, but th they are generating some. Some is better than none. Sure. And, and the, the new Pan and Tony uh, deal with it, with co-op, they're, they're integral with that as well. So, um, 
but I, I'd say get, get it right from the horse's mouth. I, I certainly will stand behind what they've done and what I think they can do moving forward. But I, I can put them on the hot seat for a little while and ask them what they, what uh, you know, what, what each penny goes to and, and so on. And one other thing with high, with um, uh, Park Twenty Four, part of that that whole deal is also infrastructure improvements with the state, which I, I know they're working through all the details of. But that's Bain Road from Waldron all the way up being expanded to Kyle, is it gonna be four lanes? Five? On Bain, no, it's basically just curb and gutter and cover but it's widening it. Widening, yes. Because they have hard times with those curves. That's, that's one of the things that you know we've talked about on that utility project is we really need to discuss with I don't think it's gonna be the chamber anymore, it's gonna be the state. Mm -hmm. But probably only need to do the intersection improvement because it's going to cost us two and a half million dollars to move utilities to put in a million dollar road so that don't make any sense because of the storm drainage and stuff requirements so that's one of the things that will be that don't make no sense let's we'll continue to work with them on that so um but yes they in my opinion the chamber does a lot for us as far as bringing in the jobs and and, and things like that Thank you, Tom. Any other nonprofit questions from anyone? Pause. Pause is for additional spay and neutering program, if I'm not mistaken. So that's where they offer to Rutherford County residents you can get your animals fixed for free. Yeah. I was um, just wondering, they had not done any in previous years. Yes, because it's so. it's the rationale has been it's not for improved services like we're not getting additional people to work our area where if you've been on any social media for any part of, of Laverne there are stray animals left and right and so um, I don't even think they know where Laverne is so that that's been part of it it's not for additional services it is for them to expand their spay and neuter program if I'm not mistaken um, and, and they do request funding almost every year. Yes. Yeah, I know they, just, I know they just request, we just haven't. We haven't funded them in a long time. Probably 10 or 12 years. I think Tom was on the board last time we did it. Yeah. So it's been quite a while. And we, and we have issues getting them down here still, so. I mean, I've seen them sometimes in my neighborhood, the, the, the impound vehicle or I don't want to say the other thing for it so I want to say we had a we had a situation just a few months back and it this was on South Waldron right by right across from Rock Springs Elementary where we had one hurt dog that had been hit by a uh, car and then we had one vicious dog and it was literally right next to the school and I had to get on the phone with the director and it just explained to him so we, we need to wait until a kid is bitten to be able to get somebody out to pick up this dog and he's like, that's our protocol. I'm like, that's not acceptable. And so, I mean, I had to go to county commissioners, um, to the county mayor to get someone to get, because that, that's unacceptable to wait for a child to be bitten or something whenever it's a vicious dog. And then the, the, the hurt dog, they came and picked up, but they took that to Murfreesboro. Then they had to come back for the vicious dog that they already had right there. So, and I think police, which, Chief, you may not be familiar with it if you haven't looked it up because I know you're still figuring all of the fun stuff out, but uh, I know PD has had trouble getting paws out for vicious dogs. I have heard talk about that, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, we actually had a meeting with them. They came in, um, but uh, I'm not exactly sure what their justification was or not being able to respond. And I do know that they, their hours of availability were very you know minimal phyllis was i wrong on there with that with their request it, it does it just specifies general services okay any other questions who, who do y'all call michael for deceased animals <clears throat> that include deer and skunk <laughs> do they uh are they pretty Punchable, they work with you? Uh, honestly, uh, 
<laughs> we'll get, we'd get you up there. No, oh, ma'am, you're fine. So, um, personally, I have not called them. All the calls that come through from the citizens, Christina, our secretary, she reaches out to them. To my knowledge, we've received no complaints. They respond efficiently and, and get the animals picked up. Any other questions? I see a, I see them in Laverne more now than they in the past years, but wild animals, they they will not do nothing. I think it's strictly just dogs and cats. We have not pick up deer. I can say that for sure. But wild animals like skunks and raccoons, just strictly, I think, dogs and cats. But I, I see them over in my neighborhood, you know, uh, not daily, but, you know, periodically. At least more now than, than I did in the past. I'll be happy to double down and get some additional information on what they do or do not pick up, but to my I don't knowledge. Think they pick up wild, <laughs> wild animals. Or, yeah. Uh, okay. Or I think Alderman Waldron's animals. talking about live I wild think animals. Think yeah. I think they will for dead animals. They'll, but d not they'll pick up dead live, animals, okay, not you're live animals. Of live, live animals. Gotcha. Okay, no, sir. I don't think they will provide that service. Absolutely not. Well. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, what, what do the other cities do for paws? Do we know? Seems like we've had this conversation every year since I've been up here. It's just a... Well, they request every year. They even come up here one year and told us everything they would do and so on and so forth. To my knowledge, all of the other cities do donate. I don't know what to what extent the dollar amount. But, but you know, even for that little bit of stuff that they do for like what Michael was talking about, in my opinion, needs to be uh, recognized. Certainly not, in my opinion, not $30,000, but for that service alone, because, you know, I got a call just here a while back. Matter of fact, that's why I picked on Michael, because I had called him. Uh, so. But there again, we're talking about a county service that's typically funded or should be typically funded by county tax dollars. So if they're if the city's paying too, it's kind of a double taxation for our residents. Shoot me down, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it both sides. <laughs> okay, any other questions on nonprofits? Okay. Moving on, we are ready to start the um, new or um, additional operating expenses and capital. Bruce, do you want to take it over from here? Yeah, I can, I can start going through that. Um, on your little packet that looks like this mm -hmm. is our capital uh, for all of the different funds. So at the top of the first page is obviously your general fund. Uh, in yellow, you have the carryover items. Uh, these are items that uh, were started uh, in the current fiscal year or uh, in the, when you get down to water and sewer, there's actually some vehicles from the previous fiscal year that we still have not received. Uh, so these are vehicles and different items that were in the current budget that we'll need to carry over into the next fiscal year. Uh, if you'll notice, there's one that's highlighted in red that we don't have the number yet. Uh, Chief Beasley is working on getting that number for uh, the carryover for the new fire station 41. Uh, it's going to be close as, to far, as far as when that station's going to be completed, uh, but some of it will probably bleed over into the next fiscal year. So we're trying to determine how much we will need to carry over into our budget to pay for whatever's remaining. Is it safe to say though that probably 90% roughly would have already been this budget year? I, I would hope at least 90%. The, the question is how much and right now we don't know because there's some delays like on the doors of, of the front, the bay doors uh, and getting those installed and then there's always going to be little stuff here and there that, that has to be finished. So Ronnie, I don't know if you've got any input on that or not. Ronnie, you're gonna need, we're gonna need you to make some doors. Working on it. We, uh, Kyle Brown and I spoke this afternoon about it, and you know, I think it depends on a lot when we receive our um, certificate certificate of occupancy when they complete that part of it. 
obviously we're not going to pay for anything that's not complete. So, you know, once that happens and then we start receiving the last parts of our invoices and the, the billings when, that Kyle approves and pays out, some of those things may complete in June 28, 29, and we may not receive the invoice until after the first of the year. So there's a lot of very open-ended questions right now. And the architect is working, um, has worked on it today. We was hoping to have a number by this afternoon, at least a guess, or you know, not a guess, but an estimate where we'd be. But right today, I could not tell you. I would even hate to say the 90% part. What about the hose replacement? Yeah. Hose replacement, uh, we're waiting on a bid package to be able to be put out. So the other items that are listed here is obviously the uh, patrol vehicles for the police department. Uh, we've, we've ordered 10. Uh, there's one that appears to be in production with an estimated arrival of, of June or July. Uh, so we're not exactly sure when we're going to get that. And then the bucket truck for the street department has been ordered. Uh, it's like it says here, 400 day lead. So hopefully we'll get it uh, before too terribly long, but that should bleed over into next year as well. Any question, any other questions about the carryover items for general fund? When, when was the truck ordered? The uh, bucket truck? I'm not sure of the date. December 23rd. Okay. <laughs> He's all over. <laughs> <laughs> he was prepared. Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was farther back than that. I did. I did too. We can only order when the order bank comes open. So even though it was approved in July of 20, uh, 23, we can only make the order once the order bank is available. Do you get updates on them things? Things are worth waiting for, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So as we go down through the different departments uh, for fiscal year 24-25, uh, the first one for this next year is in the finance department, which is budgeting software. Uh, we have hired a new uh, finance director that should be starting at the end of April. Uh, and if any of you have ever dealt with uh, trying to use somebody else's spreadsheets, it's never easy to learn those. So what we're hoping to do is get some budgeting software, uh, which would also allow the department heads to make their requests and, and also give some more uh, visibility and, and, and whatnot with, with our budget process. Um, and, and I think it'll be really good for the city to have that. We can put it on our website and, and make that available to more people. Um, so that is a first year cost of, of $95,000. There's two different companies we're looking at now. One is not quite that much. This is the worst case scenario if we decide to go with this other package. Phyllis, I don't think he likes your spreadsheets from what he said. I, I, I really worked on them this year too. And, and, like and think of all the time that you put into it. The, the software is supposed to save a lot of time and effort when it comes to putting the budget together. Are those spreadsheets different? I didn't know that. But they kind of stayed the there's about 15 different spreadsheets that mm -hmm. we have to put together mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. that's why i drive a hammer <laughs> i mean a nail use a hammer <laughs> sometimes i wish i did too um under the engineering department you have the ada transition plan which uh is is something we have to do this is not an option it's something that uh, we've we've supposed to have had completed uh, long before now, and I think Gary is, is the leader on that one, uh, but we've got to get this completed, and the estimated cost for that is 600000 Bruce, are we going to have any um, costs this year associated with the, um, the sidewalk project for Murfreesboro Road? That's, that's the CMAC. That's coming up later in, in the okay. meeting. Sorry, I'm thinking of that under engineering since Gary managed that's, that's that. one of our projects so that, that's coming up later but that project has started so the reimbursement requests have been uh, requested of TDOT and they have paid the, their portion on those so Good. That, that is where this uh, ADA transition plan to get any federal funding in, in grants and Kyle could could you talk into that thing I to get any grants 
in anything like that, you're going to have to have this ADA transition plan in place. Because if you don't, then you're in jeopardy of not only losing the funding, but paying back funding that you have received since you yep. didn't have it done. When's that got to be done by? Next Two or three years last. <laughs> past. So how, <laughs> I guess my question was how long does it, when does it have to be in place or do we lose the money? We're, Can I? Yes. We're still good right now. It's just a matter of we just need to get it done. Well, one thing that y'all have just voted on that's kind of tied to this is the fact that uh, we are required by law, by ADA, if we repave a road, we've got to bring the sidewalks at the intersections up to ADA. And in a court case a few years ago, they made, a, they made Philadelphia retroactively go back and do that in one big chunk. So this pavement renovation plan that y'all just approved uh, for public works, they really should go hand in hand. So we should be working on those at the same time. Makes sense. <coughs> okay, as we go down to codes department next, uh, there's two items listed there. Uh, one is uh, condemnation and structure demolition uh, for $50,000 to tear down any dilapidated buildings that cannot be rehabbed or, or built back to code. Uh, so this is important. We had one last year. Uh, I think it was around fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to tear that one down. So this should get us two or three this year, hopefully, that that we can get taken care of. Joe, do we have some in, do, do we have homes in the pipeline that we're going through court with for dem, for condemnation? We haven't started going to court, but we have seven that, that could qualify for that right now. Okay. We have it began because we have eleven thousand dollars in the budget now. I'd say definitely start because the the one that we did this year had already been started through court before I came into office. It takes a very long time. The other item in the codes department is a new uh, pickup truck uh, for a new inspector that they are requesting in, in the budget. Uh, the cost of the vehicle is around $44,000. We are looking at uh, doing a possible lease of this vehicle and some others that are on the on the sheet. Uh, so that would lower the cost to ten thousand seven hundred two per year. And these are not final numbers, but these should be close. Uh, so, you know, obviously, the benefit of of the lease is you're not paying for it all at one time. And with the tight budget and things like that, that can be helpful. Uh, going down to City Hall buildings, there again, we're, we're asking for a new City Hall vehicle. Once the new public works facility opens, uh, there'll be more people probably going back and forth between this building and that building. So it only makes sense to have another vehicle available. We have one now so that this, this would put us at two uh, City Hall vehicles for general use. And then the City Hall remodel and adding some bathrooms. Uh, for fiscal year 24-25, we're looking at the architectural engineering services to get that ready at $150,000. And then the estimate for the construction would come out of next year's fiscal budget uh, at pro approximately $1.7 million. Any questions on those? The, the, the women of City Hall, thank you for the bathroom. Yes, we, we hope to put some bathrooms up front, which would also be public bathrooms and then probably close off this back area so people can't just walk all over City Hall like they do now. Yeah, we've talked about securing Security it. issues, right. Uh, go to police department and you've got some replacement patrol vehicles, five there, uh, which obviously police vehicles are very expensive. Uh, and then equipment that they need for three new officers and one new captain position that's being requested in the budget. And then the police station expansion project the construction will actually be for the next fiscal year of course we don't have a dollar amount on that yet because it's not been designed what are the oldest vehicles that we've got right now that are in service I know we've been working to replace them which one 11 we have 11 year old vehicles for 
It'd be the 2013s. <laughs> any any questions on the police items? Okay, going down to fire department, uh, you've got a fire training facility to purchase the property for that. Uh, there again, we don't know what that cost would be. Uh, we would have to do a budget amendment whenever that price is decided uh, for whatever property we end up purchasing. Uh, so we don't have a dollar amount for that. Uh, the hose replacement program, that's an additional 10,000 above the previous 20,000. So it'll be a total of 30 for the year. Uh, and then the fire station 43 remodel, uh, we're looking at the architectural engineering for, for fiscal year 24, 25, and then construction in 25, 26. So the architectural engineering would be 60,000 and the construction is estimated at 508. Uh, next item is the temporary training site. Chris, this, yes, sir. Hold on real quick, just so that everyone knows, because I don't know if everyone's been over to 43. Um, the back side of 43 <coughs> has um, essentially a meeting room, like a track, which I, what they've been using for, for, um, for everyone to get together. That, that's part of that remodel. Yes, sir. I think the most important piece of that remodel would be to provide one male and female restroom facilities and locker rooms which we don't have now uh, we have one facility for that shares both uh, a cone de designates whether a male or female is inside the the bathroom um on the outside of the door on top of the lock um <laughs> we also have um that large classroom which would be repurposed for sleeping quarters which would then allow for the space for the male and female locker rooms it would most likely have to come up to ADA compliance at that point because of the the, con the size of the project. And so that would be the, the entirety of the, the uh, project. I think it would probably stretch up into the kitchen area in the day room as well. Okay. And we have the backup dispatch for PD and for the fire there. And well, there's some remediation we need to do or some things that we need to change for the HVAC units and condensation that happens in that area. The new station 41 replaces that training room. That is correct. Mm -hmm. yep. And then the other item for next year is that temporary training site. Uh, there is some land. Um, remind me where it's at. It's off of Mason. Yes, sir. Mason and Bain. And Bain, that's right. Yeah. And uh, we're looking to put a temporary training site there uh, until we can get property purchased and build a permanent training facility for the fire department. So the estimate is $200,000 to get that property ready uh, and to put that uh, temporary training site at that location. And that is property that we received for free yes. from uh, Pan and Tony Antonio. with the development of Park 24. That is correct. All of the other, other items listed there for fire or for future years. Uh, if you have any questions about any of those, feel free to ask. Uh, but I will not talk about them directly tonight. We go down to street department at the bottom of that page. Uh, they re requested an asphalt roller and a trailer for that roller. Uh, and then there is a new brush truck, which would be a replacement. So we would be keeping the old truck and using that more as a backup when one is down for service or, or whatever the case may be, or if we, we have a bad storm, we need a third one out there, we can do that as well. Is this, is this, having cre is this gonna be the same size as our existing ones or is it gonna be uh, larger or smaller for volume? Well, I definitely think that's something we're going to need. My next question would be is, what kind of ETA do you think? <laughs> huh? <laughs> or 500 weeks. I'm going to make sure y'all can hear me because i got a country accent like Kyle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who said that? So, okay, so, Parsons over there, <laughs> acting like he doesn't. Sorry, boss. Um, <laughs> so, a couple, to answer your question, Vice Mayor, uh, <coughs> We actually spoke with them today, 
And if we, they have a truck that is available right now currently. And that's a question I would have for Bruce. They said if we could provide them a letter of intent to purchase, they would hold that vehicle for us. That's something I haven't done, so I don't know the process to do that or if we can do that. Um, so that's an option. If we are not allowed to do so, then there is no ETA currently on when we would receive it. So you mean if we so. approve this, then you can send the uh, intent? But we can't get this at the earliest approved entirely until May. June. The May meeting. Correct. We could still get it on the May meeting. We, we did that with the fire department for their truck that we're waiting on now. We did a letter of intent. The board approved a letter of intent, yeah. and they put us in line for that truck. So this would be the same thing, essentially. Correct, yes, sir. And they said it's something that municipalities do regularly. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, if we don't jump on it, somebody else may. Yeah. Let's get that on the agenda, please. Okay. Yeah. Get, get the information, put it on Civic. Yes, sir. Thank you. They've also requested a, a F-150 uh, pickup truck, which is a replacement. There again, we're looking at doing a lease uh, for this vehicle as well. And then they're asking for two uh, replacement mowers uh, where they mow different areas of the city. So what? their total request is $315,000. What's Next. the lead time on the uh, F-150? And there again, if we go through the lease program, that may change a little bit. So we, we'll talk about the lease thing later, but uh, yep. it, it's something new, so we're not exactly sure how that's going to work. Uh, the next page, uh, Parks and Rec Department, uh, they've asked for a uh, F-250. We put that off until next year. Um, they're looking to pave and stripe their parking lot at the uh, Parks building, Parks and Maintenance building. Uh, for eighty thousand uh, dollars, as y'all know, we've we've recently done the library, we've recently done city hall, I think we did the senior center. So, Parks and Rec is the next one to get paved. Uh, there's two mowers listed there that are replacement mowers. It's possible we might could get those out of this fiscal year. Uh, we're we're going to check in on that, and then they're asking to uh, fix the Lake Forest Park playground. Mm -hmm. uh, with the concrete curb and put mulch in instead of that poured in place because apparently that's pretty messed up right it now. It is. So $30,000 for that. <coughs> so the total cost of all of these non-recurring capital requests is $2.248 million, um, which is obviously a substantial amount. Uh, but we'll, we'll go down and show you the grand total here in a minute. Uh, if you go to personnel request, um, finance department is requesting uh, a, a full-time assistant director, uh, which would be a grade M. This is converting the existing grant writer position uh, to this assistant director. Uh, this is already built into the operating uh, budget, so this dollar amount here is not included in the final totals for personnel request. And part of that role will be grant writing. Yes, that's correct. Just to reassure everybody, that's not going away. Right, it'll be a dual role. Uh, the Human Resources Department is looking to reorganize their department and create an assistant HR director, an assistant risk manager. Um, and there again, that's already built in the operating budget, so it's not included in, in the totals. Um, codes Department is asking for a full-time codes enforcement officer. Uh, which is a grade G, and this would be hired uh, July 1st, or January 1st, not July 1st, January 1st of 25, once they get into their new facility where they have room for this person. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's not being hired sooner than that. Joe, are you visioning this person as a Monday through Friday, or is it going to be a different type of shift where it's um, they cover part of the weekend? Because I know we've got issues with signage on the weekends and um so i mean we, we really haven't discussed that but uh that, you know that's something we could look at down the road but uh i envision it being a monday through friday but that, that's something we you know we could discuss an alternative shift if you know if you, if you felt the need for it okay okay in the police department they're asking for a full-time administrative captain uh, 
which is a grade M, asking for three full-time patrol officers, and they're asking for one full-time community services coordinator. So you see the totals there for those uh, five positions. Any questions about those specific requests? What is a community service coordinator? So previously, uh, the community service uh, coordinator was absorbed by uh, Sheree, Lieutenant uh, Robertson. And um, when she got promoted to lieutenant, she backed away from that to focus on her new role and to learn her new, her new job. So currently, we really don't have anybody taking on that role. Um, and with the, uh, with the vacancies that we had that we've you know, recently discussed at the BOMA meeting, I just don't feel comfortable dedicating more sworn personnel to that position. And I feel that uh, if we had a full-time person in that position, uh, they could be uh, working through the Office of the Chief and make sure that they're uh, uh, making the most of our opportunities to engage with the public and, uh, and forge those relationships with, with the people that we serve. And then, Chief, with the three new patrol positions, that's one per shift? Or are uh, you thinking all of them on one specific shift? No, we would be, uh, I would have to do an evaluation of calls for service and things of that nature to, before I determine exactly where they're going to go. Uh, I want to put them where the need is greatest. Um, two of those positions are actually positions that I gave up in order to uh, provide a position for um, uh, Julie, one of our people that is working in our uh, recruitment division and training division and assistant with that. And then I believe uh, the other one was the position that I gave up to create the communication supervisor. So we're ultimately we're asking to to add just one sworn position uh, from what we've had in previous years. Okay. And and these are inclusive of health insurance, or is that just straight salary? These would I, I, I this, understand. This, this includes full -time. benefits. Inclusive of health yes. insurance. Okay. The benefits will change a little bit depending if it's just them as a as the sole person on it or if they have, you know, a family of 12. Right. We, we have to plan for the most expensive because we don't know who we're going to hire, so we always plan for a family coverage, but it may be lower than that depending on who, we, who gets hired. But, yes, each of these positions are estimated at a, at a step four on our plan with the benefit cost, which is $31,700 okay. per person. It's always nice to clarify. Under the fire department, they are requesting three full-time firefighters, uh, which would not be hired until January 1st. Uh, so obviously, we only calculated half a year for their cost. Uh, also adding three lieutenant, three full-time lieutenants, uh, which would also be hired January 1st. Um, and then next year, they put off a full-time logistics officer and then they're also asking for some incentive pay for training, uh, which is $35,000. So any, any questions about those uh, positions there? Okay. And in the Parks and Recreation Department, we're looking at adding one full-time laborer too. And this is converting an existing part-time part laborer one to this full-time position. Uh, so you see the difference in cost there from the part-time position to the full-time. Uh, and then they're also asking to add one full-time custodian slash maintenance laborer, which would be primarily at the new public works facility to help keep that facility clean and up and running. And that position would not be hired until January 1st as well. So if you add all of those positions up, the total for personnel request. Uh, is $914,000. Uh, next category is the fund balance items, uh, which includes the construction for the public works facility, the remaining construction, and then the um, planning, engineering, and architecture for the uh, police station expansion, which we had originally budgeted uh, $980,000 back in fiscal year 22-23. We have a revised proposal for that, uh, which is $1.25 uh, million. So we'll take that out of the fund balance since the funds that were budgeted previously went back into fund balance. So this just takes it back out. So the total fund balance items is $4.8 million. 
So you get down to your totals, you have your carryover items, which is 1.1 million as of right now, before that one item we're still waiting on for the fire station. Your new non-recurring request, which is your capital, is 2.248, and your new recurring personnel request at 914. Our total request, new request, is $3.16 million. Which matches up. Which, if you go back to what Phyllis handed out on page four, we have 3195, so $30,000 difference there. Now, there will be some changes on especially the personnel part, uh, depending on what is done with the uh, comp study that Andrew has been working on. Uh, he should be here Tuesday night, and we'll be able to talk about that comp study and the changes that are proposed there. But these positions that are in this spreadsheet are based on current pay rates, not the new ones. So if you all are okay with that comp study, once it's explained to you, we'll have to adjust these totals to match the new pay. So that's it for general fund uh, capital. Um, are there any questions, comments, concerns? A lot of work, a lot of numbers. So definitely thank you, Ms. Phyllis, for coming back and situating it. It don't seem like it was as police and fire, especially. It don't seem like it's as much as they have asked for in the past. Well, Give them time. We've, we've kind of changed the way we've done things, mm -hmm. and it started last year. We have an internal budget committee that meets now, and we take all of the requests, and we listen to each other, all of the different departments, and try to to consider what we have available and, and what what we need, and we try to prioritize that and try to get it down to as close to a balanced budget as we can. And so when we come to you, you know, it, it's more in line with what we have available versus you guys having to sit here and, well, do we cut a $30,000 mower or, you know, what, what changes, you know, Makes sense. the five of you want to make? I know it just looked different looked a little more simplified to my simple self anyway. We're trying to make it as easy as possible and still try to, you know, move the city forward and not kick the can down the road. We got the can, lots of dents, but we don't want to do it. <laughs> no, we're not going to kick no cans. We're going to get it done. That's what we're up here for. Now, now uh, Chief Mays, I, I talked to uh, Rutherford County Schools about expansions. So uh, they talking about y'all's expansion. They suggested maybe portables. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. No, you're not. You don't like that. Yeah, I, respectfully, no, sir. <laughs> I, 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 I could just see the face of those officers right now. What? So, Bruce and the board. Before we finish this up, I do want to mention that on the nonprofit list, there's some some substantial increases on there that have not been built into the budget. Mm -hmm. So that will be on top of. Uh, Bruce mentioned that we have. Uh, three point. Uh, what's it, Bruce? Three point one. One. Three point one in additional request. We have three point uh, two to work with. Plus, we have um, probably about three, look, about three million dollars in the nonprofit that we haven't funded. And then it would be up to the board if they want that to be a fund balance item. That's all I have. Any we, questions about any of that? When will we discuss these nonprofits? You can discuss them right now. Or have them here, um, at least the ones I know I've mentioned. Um, and I believe, I know Club Knockout's planning to be here because they uh, they started emailing last month. and um, That was my next, or that was on my list to make sure that we get a representative from there. Uh, I mean, that's what we've been doing so far is discussing some of these. So if you've got a question about one of them or any of them, you can go ahead and ask. That's what this, this whole workshop's for, is to, to talk and discuss some of this out. 
And any of the ones that you want to attend the third workshop, which is on the 23rd of April, uh, let us know so we can invite them to be here for that workshop. As of right now, we have Club Knockout, Possibility Place, Laverne Housing, Driving Together, and then Rutherford County with the Forensic Center that we are going to invite for that meeting. So if there's anybody else you'd like to have. And we may, we may get Paul Latour here as well if he wants to come. Oh, Paul loves to come out. He loves coming to Laverne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paul Latour. With the chamber. He's, he's over the chamber. Over the chamber. Yeah. Well, you know, I have to, myself, that's fine, but Tom Broker's been doing this a long time, so I believe in Tom, whatever he kind of says or recommends or whatever. The Paul's thing, uh, I guess I'm on board with Bruce on that bit. He shot me down about it, which <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Makes total sense. Uh, it's y'all's decision. I know, but <laughs> but that's what we're here for is to, you know, I, I, I respect your thought like I would Tom's, you, you know, when thinking about things. And uh, the uh, forensic center, you know, Send them over to Alderwoman Hobbs. She'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll do a lot of Hobbs, you know. <laughs> Any way you slice and dice that one, huh? Any way. You want to put me on a payroll, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't, I didn't see that under the reoccurring costs. <laughs> <coughs> but... Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone has any questions, concerns about any of these, we can discuss it right now. Um, they usually show up. We usually bring in any of the groups requested for the third meeting just to kind of talk to us and give us their what they do in regards to the city or county. And um, But if you got any questions, we can talk about any of it right now. What did uh, what did you say Smyrna and, and Murfreesboro told you about the... Forensic. So Mary Esther said that she did not see uh, her being able to convince the board to do the just under a million dollar request that they had. And then Shane, when I spoke to him today, they received a request for 2.2 .2 million and they would not be able to do that without significant cuts. So what if something like that uh, get gets money from different cities but they don't get enough in order to do what they want to do does those cities get that money back not necessarily you're giving i mean it's it's like if we give money to um to club knockout and two weeks later they go bank you know they, they shut it down well that we've given them their that money it's their money at that point um unless you have clawback provisions but the county um I want to say it was either steering or finance um, watching their meetings they, they already said that they can fund this without a property tax increase so it sounded like from there and mind you they've not voted on it so nothing's done until it's voted on right Bruce Correct. Um, yeah they say that they have the money to do it well it sounds to me except on a much bigger scale what Bruce says about Powell's County this is about county money also mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. I feel the same way I mean what direct service or benefit does that provide to Laverne though that's because it doesn't necessarily put us to the front of the line for services even so that's what I'm kind of lost at like I think it's the benefit it's like location well be closer not just location or? it's um, so there are only a handful of these autopsy centers available for forensic autopsies in the state and they just had one more um, restrict the number of counties that they they're taking they're accepting uh, bodies from so it is a limited service so there's the, the benefit would be the time frame how quickly you get a result back right uh, I want to say it's what four to eight weeks right now Is that right chief yeah, I was surprised when I heard that. And, you know, my experience from where I came from, it was 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, but it is exceptionally long. 
So it, it, it's, it's strictly the speed, but it depends on how many counties we're taking. And I mean, it's a, it's a competitive thing right now. So they want to build one? Yes, they would build it over off weekly. So if they build it, they will come. Then what they will come. Hey, you opened it up. <laughs> Once they build it, then what's, how much is it going to cost to run that they, thing and upkeep it and hire people? And that is on them. Um, they believe they can turn a profit with it by doing uh, that. They being the city? Turn, the county. The county. The county is so, running this. The city is not. Okay. Uh, and the town of Smyrna is not, and all of the all of once they get to the break-even point, and then to where there's a profit, um, whatever's not required to operate the the forensic center, then to my understanding would go into the general fund for the county. So they're asking us to put money to help build it. Yes. And then they're going to charge us per body to do what they do. Yes. That's triple. That's triple. Who regulates it. that, though? The state, right? I don't know. Well, right now, I think uh, they, uh, uh, the original ones is in Nashville, uh, handles the autopsies. They, and it's, it's, it's about a six week uh, time frame down there, at least a six week. So they said regional would. would would this Rutherford County one become like a regional also and support other counties? Yes. And if that's the case, have they reached out to other counties for financial? Okay. Well, so. not for financial, but they've reached out to other counties because th those would be your customers. Okay. So, so customers. So we would be a customer. So we're helping build it, and then we're going to pay to process bodies. Chief Mays, what's the disadvantage for waiting so long for autopsy? autopsy result is there a disadvantage uh no forensically no uh it's just uh the, the results will help us guide our investigations um and you know the quicker you can get the information in terms of an investigative standpoint yes but once the body is there and, and everything else it's preserved for forensic evidence um but it it is helpful to us to get a more timely result back so that we know how to guide the investigation what's timely to you for an autopsy what do you think is reasonable, I guess, is what I'm asking. <laughs> well, my experience is completely different back home. I mean, it was 24 hours. Um, here, I, I was shocked to find out how, you know, four to six weeks to me is a hindrance uh, in any scenario. So uh, the faster we can get it, the better, because oftentimes with investigations, you know, the, the quicker we can develop our strategies and move forward with them, the better. Um, How fast was it in Memphis, Ronnie? Do you know? <laughs> no, sir. Don't investigate deaths. So if uh, I guess it doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about, but I am curious, who pays for that? The, the family of the person? Talking about the autopsy itself? Yeah. Chief? That I'd have to look into. I don't, I don't have any experience. It's the not the police department, though, right? The if, if the police department's requesting it, I'm assuming it's going to be coming that would be. from the tax dollars. I'll have to double check on that. I don't want to speak, you know, without looking into it further, but I don't believe the family is on the hook for that if it's part of a criminal investigation. I bet the only time the family paid for it, well, if the family requested it. I don't and like that would make more sense. Uh -huh. But if the police sends a body to Nashville, I guess it, mm -hmm. it's paid through by, by at least the, the police department or the, or the city or the county one. Should be. I can reach out to my uh, uh, forensic supervisor and, and uh, find out, though, for sure. And now this is just for bodies. If any other type of, like, DNA, invest, DNA things and stuff like that, does the for, would the forensic center do that or? My experience is that the crime lab would handle that. So our our crime lab or the TBI crime lab crime TBI lab. crime TBI. lab. TBI. Yeah. So they don't just do. We're we're sitting here talking autopsies. They don't just do autopsies. The forensic place. 
again, I'm not as, as well versed okay. with this, you know, coming from out of state, uh, but I can find out answers to those questions for sure. And, and if Mayor Carr is available to come, I'm sure he can explain a lot of that as well. He should come. Mm -hmm. We'll try. <laughs> or, or somebody that yeah. can explain more about the services mm -hmm. that would be provided by the center besides what we are just thinking they're going to be doing. If he can't come, maybe reach out to uh, Jeff Phillips since he runs the commission meetings as chairman. And if they're both in a meeting together, maybe reach out to one of our county commissioners and ask them to speak on them, whether it's Bill Wilson, Hope Oliver, or Laura Davidson, or Carl Boyd. It might be like when they built the, the Sheriff's Department jail up there. They, they take prisoners from outside Rufford County and charge them if they got vacancies. It may be a deal like that. If they build an autopsy, if they might not just do it in Rufford County. They might do it in Williamson or Wilson. Uh, you know, it might be a deal like that. I know up at the Sheriff's Department, they they do house prisoners from uh, other uh, cities and, and counties there. Yeah, that that's what we talked about earlier with other counties being customers. I'd like to ask them, how did they come up with that particular amount? I don't know if it's based on population or what, but... Um, we can always ask Joe when he's here. Any other questions on nonprofits? Okay, Bruce, what you got next for us? Well, I think that's all that we have prepared at this time. We obviously have, you know, our, our streets capital and our different major projects that, that we need to discuss. We're still working on pulling some of that information together, so it's not quite ready at this time. Uh, so we'll probably talk about that at our third workshop. Uh, next week, we'll talk primarily about uh, water and sewer and some of these other funds. Uh, and then we'll talk about the nonprofits that have the presentations at the third one. And then talk about the major projects and, and funding and all of that fun stuff. So uh, I don't know that we have anything else for tonight. Phyllis, do you? No. Thank you. Bruce, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but I'm looking at the Parks Capital Projects Fund. Mm -hmm. I know um, the Greenway extension, we run into an issue about the plans uh, with uh, Reagan, Reagan Smith, that they're, we're needing a more detailed plan for the Peace Corps. For I, The number slip in my mind, and David or Andrew's not here, but there is a specific number uh, that they're requesting to update those plans to get them to where the Army Peace Corps will approve them. And I guess this is a formal request to include that into the 24-25 budget. This is just so the Peace Corps will approve the plan so we can keep that moving forward. Uh, without that, I don't believe we'll have the funds to do anything with it until 2025. Al, do you know anything about that right off? Yeah, you're talking about Greenway Phase 2. You just basically want the design phase all in to 24, 25. Yeah, yeah there was something with the plans weren't sufficient. So the Peace well, basically, Corps. Basically, we got to a point where um, we, we have the plans pretty much not fully designed. The layout's there. It's just that we've got to do the full design for the drainage and everything else, both sides. Uh, Gary, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think you've been involved in some of it, but we, we just need to get an updated cost from Reagan Smith and then get that approved. So we can, uh, I can reach out to them and get what they estimate that cost to be so we can put it in here. Right. Okay. Well, we can get it pulled into this coming year. That way it'll be ready for like you say, getting approvals I mean, and just, then we're just, we haven't even got that approved. We're just, right. Yeah. Total on the total money that we got revenue and the, and what estimated mm -hmm. the budget we're going to spend. Uh, all righty then. Yeah. So any other questions about what we've discussed tonight? Any, any, qu any more questions on nonprofits? I hope you, uh, okay. then we're going to meet again next 
Tuesday. I hope you are as well prepared and as easy and everything as this was tonight. Uh, all you guys and girls that did those meetings. That's great, man. It's great. It's a team effort. We we've got a we've like got a good team. Good good department heads. Yeah. That's uh that's fire pit stuff right there. <laughs> Okay, well, call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>